Puerto Ricans are American citizens, but Puerto Rico itself is not, strictly speaking, a part of the United States. Instead, it's a US Commonwealth, meaning that they have an organized government, an elected governor, a legislature, government departments, and so on, but aren't actually incorporated into the US proper. So, they don't have a vote in Washington DC, though they do send one representative who has no voting power, and Puerto Ricans living in Puerto Rico can't cast a vote for president, though Puerto Ricans who move to the mainland can. So how did Puerto Rico acquire such a complicated relationship with the US? Well, long before the US was founded, the island that would eventually be named Puerto Rico was inhabited by a people called the Taino. But in 1493, a little-known Italian sailor named Christopher Columbus sighted the island on his second voyage and claimed it for Spain. In 1509, the Spanish made Juan Ponce de Leon, who had served under Columbus, the first governor of Puerto Rico, beginning nearly 400 years of Spanish rule over the island. The native Taino were turned into laborers for the Spanish through the encomienda system, where entire subsections of native society were put under the command of conquistadors. Over the next few decades, the vast majority of Puerto Rico's native population were wiped out as a consequence of their enslavement and, much more devastatingly, European diseases. In their place, the Spanish brought in thousands of African slaves in order to power Puerto Rico's plantation-based economy. In 1873, the Spanish abolished slavery on the island, but they also lost most of their colonial empire to revolutions a few decades earlier, and were left only with Puerto Rico and Cuba as American colonies. Speaking of... For the previous hundred years or so, the United States had been manifest destinying itself across most of North America, hampered only briefly by a small internal conflict. But they quickly realized that they had run out of space on the mainland to claim. So, what to do? Well, grab lots of islands, of course, and the dying Spanish Empire presented an excellent target. On February 15th, 1898, the USS Maine, docked in Havana, Cuba, exploded. Possibly in an accident, possibly because of sabotage, but either way, the disaster caused enough outrage in the US to force President McKinley into declaring war on Spain. The ten-week-long conflict saw America's naval power prove itself to be considerably stronger than Spain's, and the last remnants of the Spanish Empire, Puerto Rico and Cuba in the Americas, and the Philippines and Guam in the Pacific, were handed over to the US after the war. Puerto Rico was occupied by the US military for about two years until on April 12, 1900, when McKinley signed the Foraca Act, which gave Puerto Rico its elected House of Representatives and a judicial system, but not US citizenship. Instead, the law referred to the island's inhabitants as, quote, citizens of Puerto Rico. It also made it so that Puerto Rico's governor would not be elected and instead would be appointed by the US president. In 1917, the Jones Shafroft Act amended the Foraca Act. It gave Puerto Ricans American citizenship, a Senate, and their representative in the US Congress, Puerto Rico's resident commissioner. At this point though, there were still plenty of Puerto Ricans calling for complete independence from the US, but despite that, in 1952, Puerto Rico went the other way and built stronger ties to America, taking on its modern form as a commonwealth and gaining the right to elect its own governor. So then why is Puerto Rico and America's modern relationship so complicated? Mostly because of the complicated history between the two entities, but partly because of fierce debate as to the island's future among Puerto Ricans themselves. The two most recent referenda on statehood were held in 2012 and 2017, both of which returned majorities for independence. But in 2012, over one third of all ballots cast were blank. And in 2017, despite 97% of all votes cast being in favor of independence, only 23% of Puerto Rico's population voted at all. Hey look, you made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next one. If you're interested in learning more about US history, find out why New York City isn't the American capital, or why Russia sold Alaska to the US in the videos to the left. And as always, I've been James, and thank you for watching Look Back History.